Hi, it's Ian Schnur. I've been teaching financial modeling all over the world for over 20 years. And on hundreds of occasions, people have emailed me and said, help, my balance sheet doesn't balance. Now, for some reason, those emails usually come in at two o'clock in the morning. Anyway, can you relate? Have you ever had a balance sheet that didn't balance? Were you frustrated? It's usually very frustrating when people can't balance their balance sheet. Well, I decided to put together a series of short videos on the top 10 reasons that your balance sheet doesn't balance. Over the coming weeks, I will be sharing these videos with you. Follow me on LinkedIn so that you don't miss any of the videos. And leave comments below so that I know what you think and if you have other tips that have helped you over the years to balance a balance sheet. Now, in this intro video, let's start with what not to do when your balance sheet does not balance. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can see a balance sheet that I am looking at. I'm going to be sharing with you here a model called the Henderson Manufacturing model. This is one of the sample models we use at the Financial Modeling Institute. Let me go ahead and click on the model tab where I have the company's balance sheet. You can see here it's a nice looking balance sheet. I've got the assets at the top. I've got the company's total current assets, the long-term assets, and then total assets. And then as I roll down, I've got the current liabilities, the long-term liabilities, the total liabilities, and then the shareholders equity at the bottom. This is a normal balance sheet, but uh-oh, lo and behold, when I get to the very bottom, this balance sheet does not balance. My check line should have zeros all the way across. That would mean that the total assets equals the total liabilities and equity every year, but it's out of balance, which is why I don't have zeros. I only have a zero in my historical column. All the future years are off. Well, if this has happened to you, and this is what a lot of people do. If you can't figure it out and you can't get your balance sheet to balance, a lot of people will resort to the number one thing you should not do, you should never do, and that is to insert a plug. It's one of the worst things you can ever do in a model and on a balance sheet, and that is to plug it. Now, actually, there are two different ways that people can plug their balance sheets, and I'm going to walk through very quickly both of them right now. In case you're ever tempted, you'll know why not to do them, or in case you ever encounter this, you'll know what you're looking for. The first way people plug a balance sheet is what's called to backsolve. Backsolving the balance sheet means to pick any row. It doesn't matter which row. It could be a payables row. It could be a row called other. It could be long-term debt. It could be equity. It doesn't matter. They'll pick a row and they'll force that row to have a number that makes the balance sheet balance sheet. Let's take a look at the retained earnings row here. I have a link. My retained earnings cell is linking to something but my balance sheet's not balancing. So I'm going to delete the retained earnings line and I'm going to replace it with a plug, a back solved formula. And the way to do that is to press equals and now build a formula that says equals, take my total assets above and subtract, minus out the total liabilities and then minus out the common shares, any other equity lines that are here. And when I press enter, presto, take a look, instantly my balance sheet balances because I have forced this cell to make up the difference. I'm taking the assets minus the liabilities and any other equity rows. And the difference, of course, will be retained earnings. And if I copy this over by selecting the entire row and then press Control R, Control R copies to the right, take a look. Of course, now in every single year, my balance sheet balances. We can see zeros all the way across the board at the bottom which indicates that it's in balance. But the problem is, is this is wrong. I am forcing it to balance with this plug. Now, what's the problem with the plug? The problem with this plug by back solving it is that your model will now always balance. It will always balance even if there's a mistake somewhere. So no matter what you do at this point, the balance sheet will always balance. And that's dangerous. In fact, if there's a big mistake somewhere, I prefer that the balance sheet does not balance because that's a good sign that there's an error that I have to fix. But this balance sheet will now always balance. Let's take a look at the second way people will plug a balance sheet. I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna get, press Control Z to undo this. I'm gonna go back to the problem I used to have here. We can see again, I am out of balance in every year. 
across the bottom. Now, if you're not going to build a back solve formula, what some people will do is they'll use the second technique, which is to hard code. And hard coding means you'll take any one row. Let me go to my other row. People like to hide the imbalance in their other row. I'll go to other. It's linking to something. But what I'm going to do is force my balance sheet to balance by hard coding in the amount that I'm off. I'm off by 13.876, so I will type in 13.876. I will add that to whatever I was linking to, to my left. And when I press enter, again, suddenly my balance sheet is balancing. I forced it to balance by putting in 13.876. Let me go to year two. I will add in 14.404 to the second year to the other cell. And when I press enter, this year also now balances. This is the second way you can plug your balance sheet by hard coding the answer. This is also a terrible option because now my balance sheet will balance, but only under this particular case. If I change anything in the model, the balance sheet will suddenly once again be out of balance. It's only balancing now because I have this very, very specific plug, this hard coded number at the back of my other row, but any changes will force it to once again be out of balance. So this is another terrible idea. So now you know what not to do in our upcoming videos. Join me back as I review the 10 most common reasons why people's models don't balance. My promise to you is that if you watch those videos, go through them and understand them, you will never again have a situation where you cannot balance your balance sheet. You will always be able to get it working. See you then.